Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. AI tools have been exploding onto the market recently and there are literally hundreds of them. People in the academic community are talking about how artificial intelligence will impact our lives. As an educator I've been experimenting with a load of these tools and in this video I'm going to share with you a real world example of how I've used ChatGPT to design lesson plans that embed my published research into my teaching. While undoubtedly using AI has saved me a lot of time and made me much more productive, I'd like to share from my own experiences some of the lessons that you need to be mindful of when using AI as part of your academic learning design toolbox. To begin with, let's talk about ChatGPT. This is the original AI powered chatbot that's been created by OpenAI. So how does ChatGPT work? Well, go on to chat.openai.com. You make an account, I've been using the free version, and now you have access to this really powerful AI chatbot that you can ask to do almost anything. So let's have a look. The main way I've been using ChatGPT is to generate ideas for teaching and ask it to undertake tasks that can save me time. Like most academics, I want to embed my research into my teaching at university so that my students can benefit from the most up-to-date insights in our discipline. But designing new lesson plans and creating resources such as case studies to encourage learning through triggering discussion and debate is a time-consuming process. This is where I found ChatGPT could help. So I'm going to show you a real-life example from my work. I'm going to use an article I've recently had published entitled The Use of Facebook in Social Work Practice with Children and Families Exploring Complexity in an Emerging Practice. I want to use this paper to help my BA social work students explore and understand some of the ethical and legal issues of using a medium like Facebook to view families' Facebook pages with or without their permission. So I used ChatGPT to write a one hour lesson for BA social work students in the UK based on this research article. You'll see that I've provided a digital object identifier or DOI. The interesting thing is, is that when I used the DOI for my research paper, it pulled the wrong article. I don't know why it pulled the wrong article, but this is an important issue to be aware of when using ChatGPT. I'd say always check the base information when using DOIs in ChatGPT just to make sure that the article is correct. So to help ChatGPT I provided some feedback to help improve its future results. So I tried again using the full title of the paper and the URL and my name as the lead author. The paper is open access. So this is the teaching plan that ChatGPT has generated and what I'm happy with is the objectives and also the fact that it's covering a one hour duration. What I would change is, is the fact that I don't want to give the article to the students on the day of the teaching and expect them to skim read it. What I would do is give them access to the article a week beforehand with the expectation that they've read this quite complex paper before arriving to the teaching. And rather than following steps two and three as outlined here, I would move step four into the position of step two. In my experience, I find that students who engage with a case study first find that it triggers learning better through discussion and debate. But one thing I'm conscious of is the fact that I don't have a case study. This is another powerful feature of ChatGPT. Rather than write a case study myself, I can ask it to do it for me. So I would ask it to create a case study that I can use as part of the teaching plan to prompt discussion. So this is the case study that it creates. You are a social worker assigned to work with a family consisting of a single mother, Sarah, and her two children, Emily 12 and Ethan 8. Sarah has been experiencing financial difficulties and is struggling to provide a stable home environment for her children. The children have been exhibiting behavioural and emotional challenges at school which have raised concerns about their well-being. In your efforts to engage with the family and provide support, you've considered using Facebook as a means of communication and resource sharing. Sarah is an active Facebook user and you believe it could be a convenient platform to build rapport, providing parenting resources and facilitating community connections. However, you're aware of the potential risks and ethical considerations involved in using Facebook for professional purposes. 
And then what it does is it offers a number of discussion questions that students can potentially engage in. And to be honest, looking at these, I'd be quite happy to use these in a teaching session. However, using my knowledge as a social work educator and researcher, I'm aware that there's a specific law that we need to discuss in this context that's not been added here. So I can ask ChatGPT to create an additional case study by asking it to create a case study that also includes discussion about the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000. And what ChatGPT does is it creates this additional case study. You are a social worker assigned to work with a family consisting of a single mother, Lisa, and her teenage daughter, Emma, who's 15. Emma has been exhibiting signs of online bullying and has become withdrawn and anxious. Lisa is concerned about Emma's well-being and wants to address the situation promptly. And in this scenario, in your efforts to support Emma and address the issues of online bullying, you consider using Facebook as a means to gather evidence and understand the extent of the problem. However, you are aware of the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000, which governs the lawful interception and monitoring of electronic communications, including social media platforms. Now, whilst I like this case study, I don't think that it really explores the issues of surveillance and monitoring in the way that I'd like the students to discuss. So using the same question, I can get ChatGPT to regenerate a response and create another case study. So in this regenerated case study, ChatGPT has created the following. You are a social worker assigned to work with a teenage girl, Mia, 15 years old, who has recently been exhibiting signs of self-harm and emotional distress. Her parents, John and Lisa, are concerned about her well-being and have requested your assistance. They've expressed their willingness to cooperate and provide any necessary information to support Mia's recovery. And the scenario is, as part of your assessment and ongoing support, you consider using Facebook to gather additional information about Mia's social connections, interests and potential online interactions that may contribute to her emotional state. However, you are aware that the use of social media platforms like Facebook raises important legal considerations, including compliance with the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000. And then what ChatGPT has done is, is given me a number of really important discussion questions that I can use with students. This case study is better because I think it picks up on the nuances of the paper in a much better fashion. And I can also use both case studies in the teaching to encourage discussion and learning around issues such as professional ethics and legal responsibilities. So going back to the original plan, I want to move things around. And this is another powerful feature of ChatGPT. I can ask it simply to, in the teaching plan above, rewrite it by moving point four, case study analysis, to point two, move ethical practice to point three, and best practice and guidelines to point four. Isn't this great? OK, so bar some tweaks such as changing point three to enable us to explore the legal and ethical practices of Facebook use, I'm pretty happy that I can use this learning design. And I'm really happy with the way that it encourages learning through discussion and debate in a one hour session around what is actually really quite a complex topic. Finally, I'd like to ask GPT to provide some additional reading that can be used to further develop learning after the teaching session. And you can see from the response here that it provides actually quite a comprehensive list of reading. You can also ask it to provide additional materials from the UK. And here I know that it's provided quite a number of relevant UK specific publications that I can use with my students. However, looking through these texts, there are some I'm really familiar with, but there are other sources that I'm not. For example, I'm not familiar with the work of Weaver and Emand 2018. So I ask Chat GPT to provide a DOI for number three article, Social Media and Social Work, A Guide to Ethical Practice by Beth Weaver and Ruth Eman. You can see from the response that it doesn't provide a DOI for this source. And it says, I apologize for the confusion, but as an AI language model, my responses are generated based on a mixture of licensed data, data created by human trainers and publicly available data. I have not been trained directly on specific publishers or have access to proprietary publishers like DOI. I then tried using Google and what I found was that the source didn't appear to exist. Now, this is an issue with ChatGPT that I've come across before in that it can provide what appears to be really plausible studies 
but actually sometimes they turn out not to exist. I don't know the reason why this happens, but it does. And this is something that you need to be really careful about. So the lesson is, is not to use these sources without first fully checking to make sure that they exist and are relevant to your subject matter. Bear this issue in mind, but don't let it stop you from using ChatGPT. It just requires that little bit of academic discipline to follow through on the sources. An interesting experiment to also carry out is, is to ask it, can you provide sources after 2021? And here you can see that it's provided me with a number of publications that I can look at. But there is one thing to be mindful of when using ChatGPT, and you may see this happening often. It'll come up with a note that says, although the cutoff date for my training is September 2021, I can still provide information on materials published after that date based on publicly available information. However, please note that I may not have access to the full content of the sources and can only provide a brief summary based on the information available to me. This shows a current limitation of ChatGPT in, the, in that it doesn't really produce results later than 2021, although this may change by the time you watch this video. You can also ask ChatGPT to create assessments. Here, I'll ask it to create an assignment question for a 1500 word assessment based on the above for UK-based BA students. And this is the assessment it creates. It asks, in a 1500-word essay, critically analyse the complexities and ethical considerations of using Facebook in social work practice with children and families in the UK. It asks the students to draw upon the article that it's provided, as well as additional relevant sources to address the following points. Realistically, this is asking way too much from students from a 1500 word assignment. I could use some of the ideas outlined as a basis to trigger some ideas about creating my own specific assessment. I could also use the regenerate response button to get some additional ideas or ask ChatGPT to further refine what I'm looking for. But ultimately, it really offers you ideas that you need to fashion for your own needs. So hopefully this video has given you some ideas if you're looking to use ChatGPT as an academic, along with some of the limitations that you may find for trying to use it to create learning designs drawing on your own research. I found that it can help me save time by generating some really good basic ideas for lesson plans for example, that I can then amend for my own needs. I would say that you do need to be knowledgeable about your subject so that you can overcome some of the inaccuracies that can arise when using ChatGPT, as I've demonstrated here. There are some great articles out at the moment looking at the pros and cons of using AI in education. One that I'd specifically like to mention in the social work field is a paper by Singer Cresswell Boas and Rios entitled AI Creates the Message integrating AI language learning models into social work education and practice. I found this paper really, really insightful and helpful. There is a link to the paper below and a number of others from other disciplines. This is a short and selective list as there's a huge amount being written about ChatGPT at the moment and things change as time goes on. I hope you found my demonstration and reflections helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tutorials. Also, if you have any questions or thoughts about this topic, let me know by leaving a message in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.